Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob. I'll be back, dog. All right, I'm going to run it from the other room, okay. and then I'll just call them one by one. <laughs> Thanks. Is it, can you all hear me? We all muted ourselves, so you don't have to hear okay. us. Am I still on mute? No, you're good. All right, here we are, everyone. Thanks, Norvell. Um, let us just get started right away and go to Jason Blevins. Hey, Norvell, good to see you. Um, I'm, I'm curious about, uh, you've, you've sort of grown up, lived and worked all over the world, uh, Asia, the Mediterranean, Italy. What's, how does that inform your perspective on some of the social things that, are, that have been happening over the last um, well, years, but especially these these protests over the last few months. Um, you know, it's just it's just it's been going on for so long and whatnot that while I was able to be blessed to play overseas, I was able to embrace others' cultures and the the pride they have for for standing up for what they believe in and seeing that that a bunch of people come together from different backgrounds to stand up for a, a, a cause that's been needed to stand up for for a long time is is, is uh, heartwarming and very you know it's very touching to see across the world taking taking part in this which is good thanks all right let's move on to serena hey norrell good to see you what are your thoughts on just the bubble scenario in general any concerns you have obviously this is a situation that no one has been in for uh I look at it as me just playing overseas, uh, putting in a comparison to Taiwan almost, because then when I was playing in Taiwan, I really just went to the gym and went back to my room. Only for some fact, because no one over there really spoke English. So going into the bubble situation is kind of like that. So I'll be able to adjust real easy. It's just the constriction and the restriction of not being able to do what you want to do is what's like the big concern. But other than that, I'll, for me, me personally, I'll be, I'll be fine. Cool, let's go to Martin Adunchi. Hey Norvell, what, what has this whole um, season been like for you emotionally? You know, starting starting out as a two-way, then coming on the team, then having the, the season suspended. Just emotionally, what, what has this whole experience been like for you? I still, I'm still at a high, um, regardless on everything that's going on. Um, 
I was able to fill my, fulfill the dream of signing a contract to an NBA team and playing for the Sixers is, is a blessing. So it's 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 a journey that it's a it's a big old roller coaster. My whole career has been a roller coaster, up and down and whatnot. So being able to just be in the organization of the NBA and playing for the Philadelphia 76ers, it's it's no more to ask for. Regardless of what's going on with the whole COVID and, and the um, injustice system, like with injustice, but everything right now is is, is a high. I'm still I'm still excited about what's going on. Great. Let's go to Brian Seltzer. Hey, Norvell. I feel like some players have talked about, because there aren't going to be any fans in the arena, that players on the bench, if they're not playing, are going to be responsible for creating some of the atmosphere in the arena. Do you believe that? Do you subscribe to that idea? I mean, there's no other way. Like, it's not going to be any fans. So we are the energy, which is the bench. So it's going to have to be at an all-time high. And I'll do my part for sure. Well, maybe maybe give us a little bit more about that. Like, how do you uh, – what's – sorry, my kid, kid's yelling in the background. Perfect timing. Uh, how would you describe your muse for, like, your presence on the bench? Because I think people would say that it's probably a distinct presence you have. Right. Um, just having that high energy, like, on and off the court and being able to bring it onto the, to the bench, knowing that there's not going to be nobody in there but us. It's going to be like a practice almost, a practice environment, but high practice environment. So – um, be that number one cheerleader for everybody, you know, just try to make, bring smiles and, and bring that energy. Great. Let's go to Lauren Rosen. Hey, Norvell, sort of piggybacking off of what Brian was just asking you about, if you're number one in energy on the bench, who would you say are numbers two, three, and four on your team? Uh, Matisse, um, K.O., uh, Fergie. What's on next? Shake. Yeah, shake, shake, money man, shake. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but you know, everybody bringing their own energy uh, in a certain, in a different manner. I know I'm like a little, you know, out there with all the guitar and then doing all the extra stuff and whatnot. And it's just to, to bring smiles and laughs to people. So, but those in that, not in that particular order, those are like the tops that be with the energy. Awesome. Thank you. Let's go back to Mark Arducci. Norvell, um, I know you said you, you've been on a real high from being here, but obviously every, everybody wants to play, and your, your playing time has been kind of sporadic. You've, you've, you've had some good moments. Has that been difficult to kind of deal with and, and try to maintain a consistency when, you know, you're playing a few, then you're not playing a few? Oh, well, most definitely. Like, as an athlete, to get your things, to get your motor going and get your rhythm back, you have to be playing, so. The little time I get, I, I take advantage of, but it's more of like off the court stuff that I'm doing with my coaches to help me just stay ready and stay in rhythm to, to get the little playing time I get. I only see one hand remaining, so if anybody has another one, uh, please raise your hand. But right now we'll go to Jason. You know, Val, so um, these, these eight games leading into the playoffs, um, there's some there's some thought that this there could be some disjointed play with the long layoff. It could be part preseason energy. Um, do you see that as an opportunity for you to really get in, um, show what you can do? Uh, especially if if teams start struggling uh, from three, they might start attacking the paint more. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I'm just gonna do what I do best, and that's check the rim and and rebound and run the floor. I'm gonna play my part. It is gonna be it's gonna be a little sloppy out there for sure because everybody a lot of people have been playing and whatnot, especially competition five on five. But you know, it's basketball at the end of the day. You're gonna get your rhythm back within like two, three games. And then for the uh training camp, you're gonna be we're gonna be fairly good. It'll be it'll be good, but I'll be able to showcase what I have to do. All sure. right, one one follow up on that. Who are you working right now on uh pick and roll lobs with? As far as with the, the point guard? Yep. Uh, Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Social distances, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Let's go to Noah Levick. Hey, Norvell. Uh, just wondering, day to day, what you were doing um, while isolated in a way, both with non-basketball activities, how you were keeping yourself occupied, and then 
anything you were doing to stay in shape, stay as sharp as possible? Our non-activity laws in quarantine was literally playing uh, video games. We're playing video games and watching TV series, watching reruns of old TV series. And uh, I had a wind bike, weights and, and uh, medicine balls and all that stuff to just get a little workout in. I had, I did some Zoom call with one of my best friends that lives in California. We did some workouts on Zoom. Um, but besides that, I was literally chilling out. My cousin, he came with me and he was, he was living with me for the time being. And we would just work out, play some card games, play some games, play some video games, whatever. Just let, just something to stay occupied and not think about just the whole quarantine situation. Thanks. Let's go to Serena. Just curious if anybody on your team went out of their way to just stay connected with you. Was there a teammate that even though you guys were away for so long, you guys were still texting with or setting up Zoom calls or anything like that? Uh, we had a group chat with everybody. You know, everybody checked in, sent funny um, memes or whatnot simple things that they saw on the internet but it was it was like fairly like everybody was communicating through that and then we did have some zoom calls where we were just us talking and we're not trying to get our minds right for this upcoming bubble who was the leader of those zoom calls oh man you make me oh man <laughs> <laughs> i'll go tobias he'll say tobias is the leader Tobias. go back to lauren Norbell, aside from like clothes and your standard toiletries, is there anything on your packing list for Orlando that might surprise us? Uh, no, I'm bringing it, uh, keeping it simple, keeping it real simple. You know, I don't need to bring extras, but I am going to bring like two, like an Xbox and a PlayStation to switch off and all that other stuff and my iPod and iPad and all that other stuff, but keeping it simple, keeping it simple. Fair enough. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining us and thanks Norvell for taking the time. Uh, we will see you guys later on today.